hello friends welcome to my channel i hope you have liked the content which we have shared earlier please subscribe to our channel and share the videos with your friends whosoever is uh, whosoever is giving interviews for uh, spark or hadoop or any of the big data technology you can also help them okay so i'm back with spark interview question series so one of our viewers had requested a video on dynamic resource allocation so you know on on his request i am i built this video please share your comments please uh, share your questions if any on this video uh, let us start with uh, the question so the question was what is dynamic resource allocation okay so by default in spark uh, dynamic resource allocation is disabled so uh, you know you, while submitting your job you can submit how many executors you want how many executor cores you want how much memory you want all those things you can uh, mention while submitting your job uh, in most of scenarios you know especially when you are working in an organization your cluster will be a shared cluster you know there will be multiple jobs running your uh, on your cluster there will be multiple teams who will be using your cluster so in those scenarios dynamic resource allocation becomes a very important uh, part so let us first understand what is dynamic resource allocation and then we will understand that how uh, you can enable and use it in spark suppose we have a job spark job 1 it is currently using only three executors so uh, it has requested cluster manager and it has given three executors so all the boxes which are in green are the are the machines on which executor is running the boxes which are blue are the machines which are free which are being used by some other machine or which are free like those executors or those machines are not assigned to spark job so in the example that i'm showing on my screen only three executors are assigned to our spark job so you know we may need more power so here you know there could be some task which are waiting uh, for uh, the executors to be free so that they can run uh, so in that scenario spark job if dynamic resource allocation is enabled spark job can request more resources from the cluster and if the job has been waiting for a certain period of time the cluster will cluster manager will give those resources and you'll get more power so you'll get more executors as at your disposal to run more tasks so more parallelization more power so as soon as you finish with these tasks so there could be a situation where the executors are free so you had acquired six executor and out of that three executors have completed their task and they has been free for certain amount of time so in that situation uh, the uh, the spark job will give back those resources to the cluster manager and your cluster will look like this so only three cluster out of six will be used if the th other three were free so i hope the dynamic allocation dynamic resource allocation is clear uh, you know how how is it it is happening in context of spark so now let us understand that what are the changes that you have to do uh, in your spark cluster to enable dynamic resource allocation before this i want to cover uh, something called external shuffle surface it's a very important topic uh, that will be discussed in an interview if you know uh, if uh, they ask question about dynamic resource allocation so uh, first of all let us understand what is shuffle uh, you know most of our viewers are already aware of it but for those folks who are not aware of it uh, please understand it uh, properly i'm going to going to explain it so imagine you are doing a group by operation in your uh, spark job in that scenario there could be a need that data has to be transferred from one machine to other machine so uh, you know 
there are other operations also I, it can happen in case of joints also and some other operations also but i have to simplify the scenario i have just taken group by uh, scenario so data has to be transferred from one machine to other machine this transfer process is called shuffle process so uh, so when we are using dynamic allocation uh, you know there can be scenarios when executors are done with the processing they have been idle for some time uh, and after execution they are uh, the they have created some output which is being read by some other executor in the cluster so the shuffle process is on on the way you know uh, uh, it is happening so since executor has been idle and it has written uh, its data and there is some other shuffle other executor who has been reading data from this executor one uh, then it can happen that uh, because of dynamic allocation the executor which was idle from where the data was being read is killed so when that executor is killed the metadata related to that shuffle the data which is being read by executor 2 as part of the shuffle uh, the metadata of that data is lost so now uh, the executor 2 which is trying to read the data doesn't know what is the data about and how to read it and lot of stuff uh, you know goes for a toss so in this scenario the shuffles will fail so there is a possibility that you will lose the data so to solve this problem whenever you use dynamic resource allocation it is mandatory to use external shuffle service so if external shuffle service is not enabled then by default executors take care of shuffling the data from one machine to other machine so the the machine the executor on which let's say executor one executor one on which the data is being created it will take care of shuffle write it will take care of writing the data on the disk so an executor two which is interested in reading the data reading that data it will take care of shuffle fetch it will pull the data from executor one's machine so this happens when dynamic resource allocation is not enabled so if you enable dynamic resource allocation you have to enable external shuffle service so uh, what external shuffle service does uh, in case of enabling external shuffle service the shuffle responsibility is taken away from executors and it is given to shuffle service so executors no more take part in shuffle write and shuffle fetch that responsibility they delegate to external shuffle service so when uh, so so as benefit of this uh, even if the executor goes down as part of dynamic resource allocation external shuffle service since it now owns the process of shuffling the data it has the metadata about the data being transferred from machine one to machine two on machine one we were running executor one and on machine two we were running executor two so since shuffle service is now owning the data shuffling process uh, even though the executor goes down uh, you know you you will not lose data so that's the benefit of uh, using external shuffle service so to enable dynamic allocation you have to play with you can play with these properties so first of all you have to enable spark dot dynamic allocation dot enabled uh, variable so you have to set it to true and you have it is mandatory to set spark shuffle service enabled also to true if it is not set to true then you know even though you have set the previous property to true your uh, shuffle uh, will you, you may lose data and your uh, dynamic allocation will not happen you can also control that after uh, how much weight uh, you should get new executors so if you have uh, if your tasks are waiting for executor to be free and there is a considerable backlog of tasks so uh, based uh, you can configure that that how much time i should wait before i get a new executor from cluster manager 
and uh, you can also enable that for how much time executor should be idle to give it back to the cluster manager so shuffle service uh, you know you have you can set the properties for that you can define the port on which the shuffle service is running by default the port is 7337 so all these configurations you do you can do so i hope this is clear uh, if you have any doubt please post it in our comment section please subscribe to our channel please uh, give your comments share your thoughts uh, please let us know you know what are other videos that you want us to make and uh, how can we improve the quality of our videos for you and how can we improve your experience on our channel thanks everyone thanks for watching my channel